G'day folks, well it's time for a little, I guess a final prognosis on the uh, generator. Well, from what we can tell, the engine runs fine. It's actually quite warm at the moment because I've been running it, but uh, engine runs fine. I haven't run it under load, but it doesn't seem to be uh, a major issue. Definitely leaking oil because there's no um, gasket for the top end. It is, it is getting oil to the top end, it's doing its job. Radiator leaks, oil leaks engine's fine the alternator itself is a problem now originally they said it just needed brushes or br attention to the brush gear that's not really true the brushes are okay they're a mess I've disconnected them for um, test running but uh, they're all there the problem is that it's actually got a burnt winding not gonna be able to see much because it's all dirty and nasty in there but if we go to the other side what they've done is basically put the single phase load on one winding, one phase, rather than splitting it across three. So they've overloaded one phase and blown it out. Very common mistake people make with three phase generators. Don't do that. Split your single phase load across all three phases, red, white and blue. Don't just run it on one. What they've done is they've blown a phase. I've got two good phases and one bad one down in there. See that crusty bit in there? That's actually blown out. You can also see above it there's a winding that looks really toasty. Yeah, that crusty, real nasty thing in the armature there, that's burnt. So, basically got a burnt winding. The slip rings are also discoloured for that winding. They've, they've seen a lot of amps. The rest of it's fine. I've still got two good phases. If I can isolate this and just run two phases plus a, uh, a ground neutral not a big deal but if it's going to create a problem well I might as well uh, just keep the engine and put the uh, maybe connect the Westinghouse up to it the Westinghouse only does 600 rpm and I'm sure this old engine would have no problem just idling along at 600 rpm but it's not AC it's DC I kind of want an AC this is the exciter it's got its own little flex coupling in there and everything that looks all right, the exciter looks all right, it's just someone's uh, been lazy, they haven't split the single phase across three circuits, they've done one, and they've blown one of the phases. So that's pretty much what's going on with this generator. I'm still going to keep it, I'm still going to do what I can to try and get it working again properly, but spending thousands of dollars getting the armature rewound, not such a good idea, especially for something this old. I'd like to get it rewound, maybe if... I mean, I'm back in full-time work now, so I don't mind. I don't mind spending a couple of grand making a good, sec, a good 60 kVA generator. If it's going to cost two thousand dollars to get the armature rewound, that's not a problem. If it's going to cost six or seven thousand dollars to get it rewound, no, I can buy a second-hand set, a much more modern, better set at auction for less than that. That's going to run straight off the straight off the truck. In which case, I just keep the engine, and that's it. Because the engine's fine, it's a nice old engine, runs like a charm, purrs, up, purrs like a kitten, that's fine. But the rest of it, the skid, everything else, I just basically keep the engine and scrap the rest. Even the radiator, the radiator's pretty badly rusted, it's leaking. Yeah, it'd be a case of keep the engine, possibly rebuild the radiator and that's it, if I can't reasonably rebuild the uh, armature. So when I measure across the phases coming out of the box, I get 50 ohms, 9 ohms, 50 ohms. So they've taken L2 for single phase, overloaded the poor thing, blown it out, and uh, now we've basically got two good phases and one that one which is down to 9 ohms, which is almost, it's not completely short, but it's almost short. Not good. But yeah, hey, you get what you pay for. Also, thanks to a, a subscriber of mine in Germany who donated towards it, actually picking this up. Um, your donation is really appreciated. Uh, yeah, it's it's helped me get it here, basically buy fuel for it, help the guys out in the scrapyard, everything. It's uh, it's really appreciated. The thing literally owes me like a hundred bucks, so hundred dollars worth of like three and a half tons ton of steel or whatever this thing weighs probably not three and a half ton maybe two two and a half ton for 200 bucks 100 bucks can't really lose 
I say we just try and make something out, out of it. Uh, what do people reckon, reckon, uh, reckon I do with the alternator? Is it advisable just to basically lift the brushes on the bad, on the bad uh, slip rings? Just wire the brushes off, just make sure that they're, um, they're not contacting the slip rings and just run two phase. It's not technically split phase because split phase is 180 out. This is not going to be 180 out, but still. Two good 240 volt feeds, not a bad idea. Also cleaned up the, uh, the frame, it's all German. Only thing more German would be if it was Krupp steel. <laughs> Krupp makes some awesome steel, they made the, the almighty 88mm guns and armour plating for German battleships and stuff in World War II. But this is post-war, this is uh, 1960, well, ni 1955 for the engine and 1960 for the alternator. Now, the company that made the, en the engine, Kemper, uh, from what a subscriber was telling me, is uh, they've been bought out by uh, DMAG in 1955. So uh, this particular engine is probably made before 1955, but they just bought a whole lot of them from Kemper, or at least bought up the company, and then DMAG basically bought the rest. And DMAG are still making cranes and um, these electric sets and things like that today. DMAG's a very big company. So yeah, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, let's, let's give it a quick run. Still a good engine, just a little bit rough. A little bit rough on the electrical side. That and the poor old uh, control cabinet's a bit rusted out. Yeah, so I'm going to take this off completely, just strip the electrical panel off, take the exciter off, clean that up, and inspect just how bad that winding is. I might even be able to. I don't think I can rewind it in place. That's the thing. The windings are interlapping or in interweaving. It's pretty much a case of cut all the windings out and start again. Because, uh, yeah, it's, if it was a field, like that bad boy up there or something, easy, but uh, not so easy when you're dealing with uh, rotating uh, armature stuff. It's a little tricky, so, yeah, anyway. Thanks for watching. That's pretty much my, uh, diagnosis and prognosis of the uh, generator may or may not stay in one piece I'm definitely going to move it over and get some wheels on it and make it move around again but apart from that uh, it may not stay in one piece <laughs> thanks for watching